Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Penny Bloom Podcast. This is a special edition of Rebellion's Bloom. For today is Star Wars Podcast Day and uh, February 7th, the, the date of the first official uh, Star Wars uh radio broadcast uh podcast dedicated specifically to that uh on the internet it was mm. forever ago and shout out to the person putting on star wars podcast today bringing a bunch of people together to talk star wars and we're gonna lend we're gonna lend our two cents to it today i am colton robertson i'm joined by joseph george what's up homie oh, what up what up always a pleasure to be here oh and it's always a pleasure to have you and we are also joined by the man kbz kyler barnett what's up homie not much. Let's get to it. Let's get to it today to celebrate the day, the joyous day. We have not yet discussed on this podcast the animated shorts, Tales of the Jedi. And we decided what better way to do it than to do a live commentary of the whole shebang. Now, uh, Disney Plus is a little goofy. It changes the, it's different for everybody what the whole like start next episode in 20 seconds thing is. So, we're going to go ahead at the end of every episode, back out, hit the next episode, give another countdown, and we'll just get right through it, you know? So, uh, let's, uh, if you, if you got Disney Plus and you're able to watch something with us right now, go ahead, pull up Tales of the Jedi and cue it up to zero minutes, zero seconds at the beginning of the first episode titled Life and Death. Uh, and let's, let's get ready to watch it together. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Alrighty, then let's get into it. I'm going to give a 3, 2, 1, punch it countdown. And on punch it, press play with me. All right. Are we ready? Ready. 3, 2, 1, punch it. All right. It's been, I haven't watched this since the first time I watched it, actually. Yeah, I've, me neither. I've only, I've only sat down and watched it once the day it came out. And, uh, I, I remember thoroughly enjoying it. I'm actually fresh off, uh, a couple of novel readings in Ahsoka and Dooku Jedi lost wanted to bring the most I could to this. So I was, uh, I prepared. That'll be be very nice to, to see how loyal, or I guess I've heard very unloyal, um, that it is to some of these stories. Indeed. Uh, Uh, this first, this first short doesn't have, doesn't do much, uh, to negate anything from those books though. The Ahsoka novel doesn't spend time in her young days. It's the, Mm -hmm. Literally just after Order 66 and the year after the Empire has taken over. Okay. It's a yeah, nice, this it's a really is, good uh, book. This is my second watch too. I watched it just all the way through, just every episode, right out back to back. And then since then I have not revisited it, I guess. Um, mm, I don't yeah, know me neither. Why, but, um, was just kind of like a nice, um, I remember I just woke up one morning and just ripped it. You know, yep. and just got all through it. And I'm like, wow, that was just really, that was just a nice time to watch Star Wars. And that's the way to do it, too, especially with these shorts. You know, uh, yeah. you just go ahead. That's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. You sit down and watch it all in one sitting. You're going to get the most out of it. Uh, mm. And I love this character, the the Togruta Elder mm. that they just uh, they just introduced. Yeah, dude, and those little pets she's got, I know this is pretty, uh, I mean, un un sophisticated but those little pets she's got are so cute oh so cute those so little cute. like i don't know they're like dogs sort of yeah the dog the, do- the like two little panda dog. dogs panda yeah dogs. i love them i love them i love the whole aesthetic of the tigruda they got a they got a oh, real man very yeah, very like tranquil community. very peaceful oh, vibe. yeah like, and it's very tightly knit you can see that uh this is a deal for this is a big deal for everyone and she, yeah, the they don't village. even know that she got it like that. They don't even know she got it like that. No, this is just a kid. This is just another one coming into their community. And they're like, fuck yeah, yeah let's celebrate. 
And then the shit that's about to happen. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I hadn't watched this until yesterday. No shit. We're 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 getting getting jiggy with it. Oh, okay. You're fresh on this then. You you know what you're ready to talk about. Yeah, I guess kind of, but I'm going to be honest. I also started watching, and last night my Disney Plus was bugging, so I couldn't watch it in my room, so I just went to bed. So I didn't get to watch two of the episodes. So that'll be good that I get to watch those. Ah, fresh, fresh viewings, those last two. Those are good ones, too, so you'll be ready. Well, I'm going to be honest. I didn't watch them in order, so I haven't seen, I think, the second one, and I haven't seen the last one. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. I dig it. I picked one that was like really interesting sounding when I read about it. No, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, nah, man. I just love. I just love the vibes that they've got going on. The character design, the species design of the Tegruta is so fucking pretty. I like how some of them are like more of a pinkish hue, and some of them are a little bit more orange. I've always liked mm-hmm. that. The way that like Shakti back in the days of the prequels like was like straight up red almost. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I-, I loved that, and I think that uh, incorporating it into this. To grew to village a little bit, seeing just how different they can look, even though it feels like they have Man. a very singular design. Man. I think it's really cool. I love the things they do with framing. Uh, all of Star Wars animation, like look at this ground shot coming up, mm. and like the way the village is laid out in the in the forest and stuff, dude. Like those shots hit so different. I love it. I, there's, there's a, a shot pet. that's there's a little the little yeah. there's pet little thing. guys. <laughs> I don't know, kind of, uh, what do they remind me of? Like, what They look of... like raccoons and pandas and loath like, cats. I feel like, you know, like a different, like, I don't know, not like My Neighbor Totoro, maybe. Um, but, I like, see. I feel like something else kind of like that in the same vein. Um, I feel you. Ooh, I think I can... Can we just talk about the, the, the vocality of Ahsoka? Such a, such a, a young age, so cute. Oh, so cute. Baby baby Ahsoka, baby Yoda, another Man. another baby. Sorry, Joe, just join the join the chat yeah. for real for real. I'm in here now. Oh. oh there he is. Look at the Rocking look at the, the Cheese It rocking the Cheese It crew. Absolutely oh, you know. tough. TJ Maxx, I think. Pre branding. Uh, they gotta love that. TJ Maxx is not like that. Um yeah, cheese okay. it's if you want to sponsor me, please do. I'll take a yeah, lifetime I mean, supply and I will show no, you. Okay, so forever. this is a shot this is a shot that I wanted to kind of talk about because you can see the front layer looks a different kind of animation. It's so clearly hand drawn in the back, mm. but so mm. fucking beautiful. Uh. Fucking Bob Ross is fucking the fucking layout there, just beautiful. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Gorgeous oh. shit. Yeah, the I love the way they. I love anytime we're getting into like greenery or the jungle or forest and yes, yes, in Star Wars. Bad Batch has been the same way too. Oh, for sure. And even that ocean planet from Episode One and Bad Batch was incredible. Yes, yes. I mean, like they. Uh, when it comes to Star Wars animation, they can just do so much more. It feels like at much less a cost. To dude, animate. and I just love. Sorry. Oh, you're good. I just love that George Lucas kind of got his, like, a lot, has a lot of heart and stock in animation for a very long time and, mm-hmm. like, was very dedicated to kind of innovating and, and doing more with less and then eventually, like, being on the ground with Pixar. Like, it's so good to see fantastic Star Wars animation across the board. Like, no, for sure, man. Like, I love, uh, there's actually a thing Steven Spielberg once said that if you're going to be a director, you should direct animation first. It gives you such a key uh, insight into how to frame shots and because it's not just a camera. Mm. You have to literally draw it there. Uh, you have to decide where everything should be. Yeah, and it's and your it, vision too. It's, it creates a visionary in you that can translate. Because if you can do that without physical acting and and you know uh, you know performers necessarily, and and you're in charge of that kind of thing, um, that kind of changes everything. No, it does. I, mean, 100%. I can imagine you are probably in a totalitarian sense a better filmmaker in that regard. Just by doing that fundamentally probably Mm. no yeah for sure gosh i love i love getting introduced to new species in star wars these yeah and i love the name that's an underrated part no i thought it was a 
Oh no! I just I just was coming up with just oh, my. Own. It's like it's like a kangaroo, okay. but also a deer, but also yeah. a like. I don't know. I don't even a know. Kangalope, antelope yeah. type Ooh. type vibe. Okay, I can I like that. Maybe. I love mm-hmm. that the we were talking about how tranquil they are, but like their birthing ritual is a hunt. Yeah, yeah. and well. I kind of like the way that it works, though, because you'll see the lesson that gets taught in it. And there's another episode that really connects to this one in a fantastic way. Um, And even directly, because what's this name? Yeah, okay. We'll get to that. But I love that it's it's not just like we're killing them, you know, I I guess like we're going to eat them. There is a little, like they make it a ritual and actually have act upon it, I guess, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, look what's about to happen here, as you know, Kai Buck. That's such a cool name. No, yeah. I know. Yeah, and Ahsoka makes you wonder she's not why they. It. Yeah, Ahsoka hates it right now. Yeah, yep, this line right here. Do not this line fear. right here. Yeah, and I love the the title of this episode. And then there's another line in another episode that literally ties right just, back to it. Yeah. Oh man, loved that. No, nah, it's just it was just so bold of them to make these all shorts, like it, stuff that they could have done entire series about. They did in like less than an hour, and their stories uh, with Ahsoka and Dooku separately. Uh, it's easy to digest, I think, and it makes a lot of the moments hit a lot harder. Because I mean, you're, I mean, like there's one profound moment in each of these. I feel like you know, mm. or, or maybe it's, one yeah. or two. You know, so it's easy to be like, oh, okay, I I see exactly why. I think it goes a long way to say that, like, this is from an age or time or perspective of of characters we haven't seen from. So it's nice to see kind of the the foundation or the the building to what we know them as and what we've already seen them and such. Hmm. Oh, yeah, especially with Dooku in that regard. Ahsoka, you get a little bit of... Man, I can't wait to talk about that because that was the first thing I thought of was just like, oh, man, yeah. seeing Dooku in this regard. I mean, we've never – Joe, I thought of you because I know Dooku is yeah. one of your guys. So I was like, yes. man, it, it's awesome to see Dooku actually as a Jedi. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It, it is really interesting that like – I feel like the shorts for Ahsoka was to build hype for the live action show and give you like some backstory on, you know, just mm. the Ahsoka's character for people who have no idea well, who she is. And, and, who and, watched and, and stuff. Joe, maybe you're onto something there and this is kind of a test, you know, they did a couple with different characters and then Ahsoka's actually got a show and, you know, well, maybe depending Dooku? on the response. Was Dooku just yeah. because they could make shorts that, you know, they're, I they're think there's a lot of potential. Back, I think there's you know, a lot of potential fuck, with this yes, character. Yes, The the roaring yes. at the beast. That's what true. a pimp! <laughs> yeah. Ahsoka comes from some some hard motherfuckers, bro. You see yeah. that? Mm. Man. Uh-oh. First time I watched this, I thought for sure we were about to get Manda or Grogu with the uh, the mudhorn. Mm. Like, oh yeah, that's what I thought that. too. That's exactly what I thought. No, she doesn't even. She, 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 she is like so. that. Look at her. She's like she just took that headbutt straight on. Said, "Let me pull the knife on you right quick." Like that's some that's some G shit right I there. Love, Pop t has got it going on. I love how she also talks to Ahsoka as if like she, she just fully understands her. Like oh, she, while she's thing, teaching she, her <laughs> lessons, like and like I think they do. Like they it's do. like yeah, it's like that's oh. nuts. They like from birth. <laughs> Pretty Especially much. that, like, also that she's force sensitive, she can understand mm-hmm. things on a different level, and uh, the whole village coming to the aid, man. I love that. I love a community, man. Mm. I love a community. It really did just snatch up a baby, though, and just ran that. Damn, that's that'd be hard. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, man. What a rich. What a. I don't know. It's it's their community. No, I'm not not against it, but to like. Put your newborn in that amount of danger, like off rip, you know, I mean, good lessons and all, but traditions. Oh. Well, and that's also the thing is that that's not typically what they're hunting. You know, uh, they hunt fair. the Kai buck. True. And they're like, you yeah, don't anticipate cool. to run into a saber. whatever. No, whatever. What is hell. that thing? Yeah. What the heck is that thing? Some sort of, some sort of tiger type beat, uh, 
Sabretooth. I just but love that during this whole time, other than when she cries when she first gets snatched, she's just so unbothered. Yeah, she's like, damn, man, I thought we were homies. I can feel you through the force. I don't know what it is, but, like... I you thought you know. were bruh. Turns out you were, thought like, you were bruh. <laughs> Dude, this is a major bruh moment. Dude, I love I love <laughs> little Ahsoka. She's such a cutie. And this motherfucker's like, I'm gonna try to scare you, and she's like, yeah, I won't have any of that. Bury your He's teeth. He's allergic to cat. She's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm just Cat gonna allergy get on out of here. See you later. <laughs> she said, "Yo, I'm trying to get on your level, my guy. What's up? You want to talk through this?" Oh, homie wants a snack. God, the animation's uh, so fucking no. good. Oh man, in the eye. Oh, dude, this this is That wow. shot right there, man. Oh, the eye contact oh, and just like the, the the gravity of the moment. You can feel like that touch what it does to both of them. Yeah, the way he and just then he's like back. double he's double checking it. He's like, No way this really uh, like no way that's how that right? And then he's like, Damn, she really liked that. She Damn she that is. shot right there with them all ah, mm-hmm. that's so good. It's so good. That is and anim- like with a real camera, you have to actually place the camera there. A big, yeah. clunky, and so much more equipment. Audio equipment, you got to get all the stu- studio stuff people set up behind the camera. You know, so, like, there's so much limitations whenever you're setting up a real camera where you have to do it a certain way most of the time. But with animation, it is from scratch. It is from your brain to on screen, you know, and it's, I don't know. It makes makes for just more beautiful shots. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I love I love a connection between a human and an animal. There's this uh there's this giant part in Dooku Jedi Lost actually. It's funny that I'm going to connect this to the Dooku book uh where one of the things Jedi practice is beast control is what it's typically called, but Dooku learns to call it something else like it's like a oh, I can't remember what he calls it, but it's like it's it's less control, it's more just like connection. It's like animal connection mm-hmm. or something like that. And uh it's just cool to see Ahsoka being able to practice yeah, that. And, and listen into it again, I didn't really realize the score, how good it is, the swell there, and kind of the... Oh, man. That's a good moment, oh, man. The whistles and flutes with, with the Tigruti just fit so well. Like... Mm. That's exactly the vibe that they're they're bringing to the table. Ah. Ahsoka literally just translated. Like, right there. Mm-hmm. Like actually, this is what I she didn't said. realize that. Yeah, like it. Wow, that was actually kind of cool. Cause it. That, wow, I didn't realize that first time. Man, and they all know right then yeah. and there. This shit is different. Especially the elder here. She's like, "Yo, yeah, yeah. so the Jedi, man. Yeah, <laughs> wow, look at that. That's dope." Sorry and shit, you're gonna have to say goodbye to your daughter. <laughs> yep, sorry, she's being kidnapped and taken away from you. Uh, not really. Ki- I don't know. It is no, yeah. There, there, there's an option there. She doesn't have to go. The Jedi strongly recommend it. Yeah. But, uh, and how do you turn down like, hey, your kid is one of the most. I don't know. You know. One of the most special people in the entire galaxy. Every time the credits roll, I always imagine the Bad Batch song that kicks in for Star Wars. Oh, that is baller. But you guys got a countdown right now? What's it at? I'm at, well, I'm at next episode at 00 right now. All right, cool. Kick ass. Let's go ahead and get season one, episode two, titled Justice pulled up all right um, i haven't seen this one all right this is a goodie kyler if you want to just soak it all in you just go ahead and soak it all in me and joe can carry if you have any thoughts just let us know all right it's, it is a little bit harder to afraid. talk about things you have not seen i know from experience so uh well you know what i love to do that so let's ride let's ride let's ride all right then uh we got a nice 15 minute episode here 
Let's get the countdown going, same as last time. If you're ready, I'm ready. Indeed. Three, two, one, punch it. All right, and we're off once again. Uh, now this one's this one's Dooku focused, and actually, I think it's one of the. Uh, this might be my favorite Dooku centered one. It's funny that this is one you skipped out on because I uh, I think we get a little bit of Qui Gon in this one. I think which, yeah, you know, and I'm gonna be honest. I was just looking at the little pictures and reading, and it says two Jedi, and I couldn't quite make out because Dooku's so much younger and different looking than he is in the mm-hmm. other pictures and stuff. That I was right. like, you know what? I wanted to watch the one with, I think it was like Anakin or and Ahsoka, and so I tried to watch that. Mm. The man, oh, yeah, the myth, dude. Young Two Clyde, goats huh? right there, man. Two goats right here. Love that Qui Gon's voiced by Liam Neeson's son. Wait, oh, actually, I did not know yeah. that. That's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. That's very cool. Oh man, but man, this pair like Dooku trained by Yoda, Dooku training Qui Gon, mm. Qui Gon, you know, to Obi Wan, no, Obi Wan, so cool. oh, the lineage, dude. It's like, so cool oh, too, because I actually just before I reread Ahsoka and Dooku Jedi Lost, I reread uh, Master and Apprentice, which mm. is centered around Qui Gon and Obi Wan, but Qui Gon. That takes place pretty freshly after Dooku's decided to leave the Order. So he's contemplating that a lot. Uh, and he's contemplating why his master might have decided to do that. And to see the route that Qui-Gon goes, is it's like more of a connection to the Living Force. He turns down an invitation to the Jedi Council so that he can reconnect with the Force as a, and be on planets, be present. And an adventure like this leads him to realize that he needs to be present in the moments. He can't sit on the council and decide for people what should be done without being there. Uh, Mm. He realizes he needs to be up in it. He needs to be involved. And uh, Dooku comes to the same conclusion, but he does it for his home planet. He goes back to Sereno as opposed to helping through the ways of the Jedi. uh, Mm. Where... Dooku sees limitations, Qui-Gon sees challenges. Uh, and he it decides he can, he can try to overcome them. Dooku is a very interesting... Like, Dooku and Qui-Gon are very very similar in the way that they see kind of the flaws in the Jedi, but Dooku just takes it to quite the extreme. A different level, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and Qui-Gon's just kind of more of the... Trying to fix from... You know, fix the Jedi from within more, and then I, I feel like Dooku's the kind of fix the Jedi from outside of the order. Yeah. No, yeah, there there's a, there's an interest like they are a pairing because what's interesting too is that Qui Gon's not Dooku's first apprentice. Uh, his first apprentice was a, a guy by the name of Rael Avaros, who is an absolute pimp. Love that character, super cool in both Jedi Lost and Master and Apprentice. And uh, he never thought he'd take another apprentice because he the love he had for Rail was so deep. And then he goes on to love Qui Gon even more, uh, hmm. which is super fucking cool. And uh, this this episode, man, I uh, I do I do. This might be my favorite short of all of them. It's uh, pretty it'll, good. It's it'll like... be hard to decide that any are better than this. Hmm. He's so. Uh... Dooku has already been badass in my book. Like, just all, no matter what. It's Christopher Lee. Like, oh, that dude mm. is just badass. But now, like, seeing him just young and in his prime and, I don't know, just, ah. Uh. Well, and that's what's cool, too, is that this kind of shows... It's almost like a prelude to what happens when Dooku takes over as the Count of Sereno. We saw in the Bad Batch recently, like, uh, he didn't just take from outside worlds that he conquered. You know, the Serenians suffered. And yeah. this shows the an example of a senator who's corrupted by his power and is taking from his citizens. And Dooku protects them, but he, he ends up doing the exact same thing. Man, he he his vault was... His collection was Plentiful. quite vast. Like, oh my lord. <laughs> I guess it does make sense because he's like, 
who else would reap more benefit other than like Palpatine? Like mm-hmm. on this, on you know, for, from the war, who else reaps more benefit other than Palpatine? Um, I don't know. Dooku, mercenaries, bounty hunters, they seem to profit a lot during the Clone War. Mm. Right. Is that a brick? Oh my, did you see that? That was a brick on that building. I don't know if you caught that, but that was a little ridiculous that we're watching Star Wars. And we're seeing bricks. And there was a brick? I, <laughs> okay, I, maybe we stop this live That's where I draw guys. the line I, I don't in know. Star Wars, man. I believe a lot of things, but <laughs> bricks? Yeah, I just, oh, it's it's in, impossible. Impossible I don't know. to get past. Um. But man, I don't know, seeing the young Qui-Gon, like, it, it took me, like, it's just so weird seeing Qui-Gon like this. Just, like, shorter hair, not Liam yeah, yeah. Neeson, um, yeah, basically. Yeah, the seasoned, the seasoned Jedi we see mm-hmm. him as, we see him as. Mm-hmm. And you are not aware <laughs> of these conditions. Uh, Severus Snape looking mad. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Man, both it's definitely my Both of those actors are they've passed. Both of them now. That's so that's... who is who is I wonder who is this voice? Pretty good. I mean, you can tell it's not Christopher Lee, but it's No, pretty... yeah, but I I'd be willing to bet it's the same guy that voiced Dooku in the Clone Wars TV show. Mm, okay, um, yeah. I can't remember who that is off the top of my head. But I love, I love this kid be like seeing the plight of the people and being like, yeah, frankly, I can't fucking blame them for kidnapping me. Makes a lot of sense. I'd help, I'd hold me ransom too. Corey Burton, um, is Corey Burton. who voices Dooku. And he is, holy shit, in quite a lot of stuff. I'd be willing to bet. Voice actors stay busy. Bad Batch? He's Cad Bane? Oh, I can hear that. I can hear he's, that. Yeah, he's Cad Bane in book in Book of Boba Fett as well. Wow. Just the voice. <clears throat> um, but Count Dooku in the Lego Lego games. I I'm hear like, Cad Bane now. I do too, big yeah, time. The, the, it's a little more guttural yeah. than Cad and, yeah. Bane, but yeah. yeah. He did uh, do Dooku and Cad Bane in Clone Wars as well. That makes sense. That's funny. Now that now that that's pointed out to me, I'm like, yep, I can absolutely hear that. Uh, as well as Nick's card. I don't know who that is in Clone Wars. Um, bunch of one episode. A, yeah, he, just, he has a bunch of. Yeah, he just probably does a bunch of characters in there. God, the score once again. It reminds me a lot of Ludwig Göransson's scores of. Uh, of the Mandalorian, like that guitar mm. faintly coming in. Mm. I like that. I like that. That's right. Triumphant, triumphant sounding. Spit. Spit. We serve the people of this republic. And I'm about that action. You start shooting at me, all right, good luck. Um, I'm going to whip out my, my curved hilt, the blade. blade. Oh Dude, the blue. Oh, is, oof. Oof. At that point, I'm like, you know what? Okay, two Jedi. I <laughs> okay. I Yo, and it, and they don't know what they're about to fuck with. They don't. <laughs> they don't know that they're about to fuck with a guy who's already been touched by the dark side. Uh, yeah, um, that's a it's a hard thing to come back from. There's actually a part in Dooku Jedi Lost where it's like almost prophecy, not prophecy, but destined. Uh, you know, we talked about sifo and mm. how he's he's like one of the more tragic figures in Star Wars because he suffered from premonitions and they would cause him to like seize. He would have seizures when he had premonitions. And one of the premonitions he had was he, he saw people chanting Dooku's name and him standing above them as a ruler and uh they go to this oh, wow. dark side planet and he sees his whole future he sees asajj ventress uh, a woman with skin that is bone white and uh he sees all this stuff he hears 
uh, her say master, uh, Palpatine say my apprentice. And it's years before he ever met either of them. And it's like, yeah, this oh. man. Was, yeah. Yeah. I halfway expected to have an episode on him in here once I kind of figured out um, what they were looking like, but nothing. Right. Yeah. Hey, you better watch your tongue, boy. Yep. Be careful oh, yeah, not to who... choke on your aspirations, director. Oh, my God, bro. Dude, yeah, that's... Is... Mm. While choking him, deflecting the blaster bullets, pushing Qui-Gon back. Damn. Yeah, Qui-Gon sees the dark side of his master a little bit more than everybody else. Um, it's kind of when, it's like when a, a child sees the flaws of a parent and decides, all right, I can be, like, I see the good in them. I'm going to be them, but without the flaws. Like, mm. he, and he does that hard, you know? And he's the Ooh. only one who can talk him down in times like Love this. Love what they he, do with the sound there. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, you can no, see when he's choking him, he was... and you hear it like it's almost like Ooh. like halfway coming through, like it's that underwater rumble. or something. Mm-hmm. And then he he you know he, he comes to that. almost, and then the mm-hmm. the sounds crisp and clear. You can see he's definitely conflicted. It's not it's not him. Like whenever he was doing that, yeah. dude. Yeah. And there's Hard. another. Oh man, speaking of his conflicts, goddamn dude. There's something else later. We're I'm really tired. Chris got Lee. Hmm. Dooku Kill is me. man. I love Kill like me. I did not like Tales of the Jedi was not anything. I was like, oh yeah, whenever it comes out, like obviously I'll watch it. But it wasn't anything. I was like on the edge of my seat waiting for it to come out. But then I watched it. I'm like, oh my god, I couldn't have asked for like anything more Better. pleasant. Like yeah, I just got Dooku and Ahsoka and like um oh, yeah, bad, like, I'm, I don't know. We're, we're good, man. I love like. Like, just the details that they have to keep right. Like, Qui-Gon's lightsaber is, like, mm. I don't know. Like, I love how they just keep every detail the same. Yeah, I've never Dude, paid Qui-Gon, attention to that. Qui-Gon's a little fat in this episode, showing all that chest. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Hey, he's he's, a he's young. He's young, yeah, man. He, give him, yeah, give him he, he's got it. No, he's got, some it. he's got the pecs working. He's working the pecs. Yeah. I see it. That's another thing about uh, Rael Avaros that I love in those books, Dooku's first apprentice, is that that dude is like staunchly Jedi can fuck. That's okay, as long as they don't, <laughs> as long as they don't fall in love. Uh, huh. He's like, yeah, we can fuck all we want, and Qui Gon like catches him in bed with a woman at one point, and is like, oh, I'm I'm so sorry, you know, like oh god, and he's like, no big deal, uh, and he's got like a deep Southern draw. It's no big deal, buddy. It'll be all right. <laughs> She was just leaving. Uh, a real Yandu Dante type. Yeah. Yes. Just, just running through it. God, look at that! Just beautiful uh, imagery there, like the almost black and white, devoid of life coloring there. Just gorgeous. But uh, that that does conclude yet another episode, and we're on to the halfway point in choices. Oh, it down, baby. Episode three. Oh. So when you guys are ready, I'll give another countdown and we can get into it. Is everybody everybody ready? Wait a minute. Are you still on the watch with me, Kyler, or no? Yeah, I'm in here. You are? I'm in here. Yeah, it's like the little bar in the middle or the little box in the bottom right. I'm just waiting on you to click next episode. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm... I think we might be out of it, actually. Yeah, I think it just it says waiting for hoes. New group. You've already started a group. What? Never mind. I'm confused. Okay. I don't know. I guess. Is it? Is there another tab you can't find? No. It's still in the like boring credits now. Yeah. Yeah. I think I don't know. Something just happened. I don't know what. So maybe we just all separate now and just go to zero zero and start it separate now. Because I don't know. It just said that it just left. I left for some reason. I didn't do anything. It just. I'm no longer interesting. Um, All right. So, So, Kyler, are you ready? Um, one moment. Episode three choices. Yeah, episode three choices. Get it to the zero 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 mark, and I'll give us a countdown, and we can press play. Let's let's do it. I'm ready.
We are ready? All right. I'm ready. Three, two, one, punch it. And we out. This is another goodie. Love me some Mace Windu content. We don't get nearly enough of it these days. Love me some Mace. Star Wars. Uh, I love how I love the dynamic between Dooku and Windu in this this episode. Mm. Yeah, because you know they're they're both really like Mace Windu's really staunchly of into the, way. the morals and ethics. Yeah, yeah. Dooku is like, nah, bro. It doesn't have to be like that. Blanket it. And he's even closer to falling to the dark side at this point. Oh, yeah. Oh, ambush the Senator. Why? I love how Dooku is, like, immediately, like, skeptical. And this is his attitude towards it. And then even before they've got to the planet, Windu's already, like, checking him, like, you shouldn't be thinking that way. Who is a who's the character in Clone Wars looks very similar to her? Don't tell me, but I know it. I just gotta get there. Do you know what I'm talking about? She's the one who like framed Ahsoka. Yeah, I know who you're talking. I can tell you right now. You said don't tell me, so I won't, but <laughs> if you need a name of anyone in Star Wars, Colton's got it. Uh Colton's pretty much got you covered. There's actually a brand new character that was just introduced in uh the uh the blade number two at the end who is mommy as fuck is one of these species. Uh, mm. Super love cool. Those, those those types. Barisafi. Oh. Yep, that's it. Barisafi and Luminara and Dooley. Barisafi wasn't it her symbol that was on the wall? Ew! This freaking orange is all rotted. It's like uh, I've never seen that before. That's actually great. sorry. That just came out of nowhere. That's okay. I opened an orange and it was black. Uh. Not an orange. So. Petrified. It was. <laughs> ah, gosh. I love different planetary guards. Like they're. Yeah. The style and like garb they wear. Yeah. yeah. The different it's planetary just... like choices is really cool. It's kind of like how we talk about the names of like different things in Star Wars and how like we can't wait to hear what the name of something is or like we look for what the name is. There's right. just so many different like guards we see always. It's so nice to always see. Like, yeah, like so and they've different. got a consistent aesthetic too. Like this guy's like robes here are very similar in coloration and everything as the guards. Oh yeah, it's outside. always very congruent and sym- symmetrical. Yeah. It's so nice. It's so satisfying. Like, look at the wall art. They don't have to do that. You mm. kidding me? There's wall art in this building. That's fucking awesome. And it's like really abstract, like squiggles, Damn. like right there. Yeah. You see that? Bro, this dude, uh, can we talk? Because like I, this dude had me feeling all types of suspect already and not even suspect in the sense of like, I guess he did something bad. I mean, I kind of thought that, but he just seemed so beta. It was like, of course you got, like, of course you got got in this situation, bro. Listen yeah. to the way you're talking. You got no conviction or confidence. You're like looking down. You won't look at anybody. Come on, mm. man. Come, Come on. on now. Come on now. That dude's character design is clean as fuck too. Like the scar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like and that slick back hair. It's like mm. you just know he's gonna be some up to something. Like you just know. Yeah, they got a good. They got a good way of just. God, and the symmetry of that hallway and the door there, like, god damn. It's the it's little just... thing. Like I said, the framing, they go to such a length for, like, that kind of stuff. And it really does give scenes a different sort of feel. And I would describe it as animation. I would describe it as, like, texture, if that makes sense. Like, right. I don't know if that makes sense. But, like, there's sometimes you watch animation and, like, things are just very rigid or, like, very, like, mm. common. Oh, and, Didn't you know. The bad, the bad Batch came to this planet, right? It actually looks familiar. Yeah, I think the Bad Batch came. I thought the hallway and stuff and that oh, office looked familiar. Yeah, I think so they go there. I think they go here at some point in the Bad Batch 
and get the senator out of there. This was like a separatist planet that, uh, oh, what was it called? I feel like it started with an R. Oh, I'm going to find it. Raxus. Thank you. Yes, Wait. Raxus. Is that where it's like Texas, Aang but was? in Star Wars? Is that the very beginning of where Order sixty six happened in bad in the Bad Batch? No, that's a that's a different that's a different planet. It's a yeah. it's where they go to free a a senator. They like get hired by a droid, and they're like, "Oh no, mm. a fucking droid gave us this job," and they like sneak through the castle, uh, get the senator out of there, knock over a mm. vase or two at some point. Like, I think that's this planet. Mm. man i love the design of this planet anyway the trees i love trees like i said forest woods type area that's my shit he's like red just have a way of making it look so beautiful man like i said i feel like that's just the, the the attention to detail and the scenery is just it's always spot on and that like i said that's just the little stuff that like it just gives it a different type of feel. Like, I think that's part of it is like, these things are made for kids. We've talked about this, you know, mm. but these are the little things that can kind of make it just a little bit more like, I mean, I'm not saying that star Wars content is hard to stomach, but like, it's the little stuff that like, you know, we can wow. appreciate even more. So, you know what I mean? God, I love a shot like that. The saber at the side, mm. like, ah, it's so nice. <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> R.I.P. in peace, Dick Wild. Talk Wire. about a horrible way to go. I mean, just like, the guards killed her, run like three steps and immediately clapped in the back. Like, well, <laughs> that was the way to go. Dude, just Yo, they go fucking masters here. going oh, at yeah. it, though. Yeah. Like, oh my god, like... Dooku and Windu are like Shaq and Kobe, man. Like that is something. Right there. We didn't get it. We didn't get it for long, but boy, was it electric. And they had a little beef, but damn, were they good together? Perfect. In that oh, energy, bro, Shaq and Kobe didn't get them for long, but man, while they were there, were they electric? <laughs> man, yeah, the design of these guards is actually really like each one of them is very See, and okay. And, yeah, and Colton, you touched on something really good. I think it was in, I guess, technically the last episode. But um, I love that, or I guess you ta- touched on it at the beginning, when you talked about how Dooku's a little older and closer to turning to the dark side here. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that it's basically the same exact kind of conflict, like multiple years apart, because it just goes to show that like he gave the Jedi arguably m- multiple years of chance to fix or, or show mm-hmm. that they were making progress. And he's getting this same thing right here. I mean, this is the exact same conflict that he just dealt with with the other senator. Yep. Yep. And I also love that the, these conflicts just keep pushing him further and further into his point of view. Every oh, time yeah, no. it's the people who are against the Senate. They're like, mm-hmm. the Senate keeps fucking us over. You know, like we can't keep doing this. And Dooku recognizes the validity in those statements, even though the Jedi, like, that's his beef with what the Jedi become, is they've become more police for the Republic than anything else by the time he's ready to fall to the, fall to the dark side, is because he's, he's done with yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, people are seeing the Republic as basically the person who, you know, has the huge older brother on the bus, and it's like, oh, if I bull, if you bully me, guess what? I go hide and stand behind him, and that's all the Jedi. You know, mm. they just get to sit there and shoot. Sorry. They get to, you know, I mean, that you're talking about the best protectors in the galaxy right there. Like that, if you have anything you want to accomplish, you've got the right people at the at the home to get that accomplished. And that right there where he goes, Katri was a Jedi. She would have listened. And Dooku stands there like, I don't know that she would have. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's that's what's going through his head in that moment. It's like, I hope she would have, but I don't know that she would have. Yeah, right here. Your ideology is like, okay, I can see it. I see where you're coming from here. Talk about how the Jedi are one-track mind. I love the score with Mm. this. Because he's not saying anything that's too terribly bad because Windu's standing there. 
but the score and the way mm. he's saying it, you know, you just get cuts a little different. You can tell. Oh, like what I said a little bit ago about this being a separatist planet. He tells them, make sure your people don't lose their heart and resolve. He comes back to this planet and is like, y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Yep. We're separating hey, from the it. Republic. Yeah. Like that's. Yep. Didn't see in that shot right there, there, bro. The, like the cell prison cell was like a red energy thing. Mm. And instead of like the guy who's actually in the cell wasn't shown through the red, but Dooku was shown through the red yeah. area instead of the prisoner, which mm-hmm. was interesting. I don't know. I just love the, like the, the use of red and blue light is just always so good. Do you think the Jedi will continue to keep the peace if they take everything the Republic says as law? This man's asking the right questions. And again, he, a few seconds ago, I don't condone your methods, but your ideology has its points. That's the point he gets to. Like everything that happens in these episodes, he ends up being a hypocrite about. Uh, even though his ideology has its points, his methods are all sorts of fucked. Uh, it's just, mm. it's just really, really well done. Man, every time I see a Jedi funeral, it just reminds me of when Obi Wan faked his death. Yep, they just yep, that's Anakin, like even exactly. Further, you know, like, like I don't know. The, the Jedi's have flaws. Like, a, like they that are big just ass hood on Kiati Mundi. <laughs> <That's>... Yeah, <laughs> man, it's so funny to see some of the Jedi that went over there to try to arrest Chancellor Palpatine. Because I just look at him like, you are sorry as fuck. You should have been in the gym, bro. You should have been in the fucking gym. Hey, they tried to go up against Palpatine, though. No, they went up against Bro, there Palpatine. was like eight of them, bro. I don't care. You went out sad like as four. fuck. Some of y'all were just standing four. there in the same like position when the yeah, picture. I, four don't of them. care. Don't care. You had Mace don't Windu. Care. You had don't Mace care. Windu. Mace Windu plus three other. Come on now. Come on now. You're, t- you're talking about, but on the other side of the coin. Yes, I know. Palpatine. I know. The, the ultimate Sith Lord. But look, man. Some of them were literally standing in the same position as when the initial shot of them standing there and when they got stabbed. How the fuck you letting his little spinny cycle fucking move? You really getting bamboozled by that shit? Also, you getting bamboozled by that shit? Mace was really one of the only ones that was kind of in on the idea that Palpatine was the Sith Lord. These other Jedi were kind of just there to go along to arrest like Chancellor Palpatine. Oh, so they, they ain't bringing the heat. They ain't bringing the heat when he whips out a red lightsaber. Dumb fuckers. Uh, he I don't jumped know what to say, man. He did like anyway, a twelve eighty spin. Anyway, anyway, that line that was just happening right there while we babbled over the top of all that shit <laughs> was fucking great because mm-hmm. um, I love that Mace Windu is kind of sounding like a schmuck. He's like Dooku, you got some shit to work on, man. And it's like Dooku's like, nah, bro, you got some shit to work on. And the, neither one of them are gonna get get the answer. They yeah, need. neither of them are gonna work on the shit they need to work on. No, 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 no. All Man, right. I don't, I'm on a. I'm on zero zero of four. Whatever. Zero zero at four. All right. This is titled "The Sith Lord." It's where we get a little get a little mm-hmm. Emperor preview. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This one just yep. stands there the whole fucking time like a pimp. All right, we ready? Yeah. In three, two, one, punch it, man! But I wanted to uh, the in the Mando uh, trailer, the door, you know, Order sixty six flashback. Everyone, it's like it's so easily Anakin, right, coming through that door. It's like the easy answer, but like, I what if it's a fake out? And it's you know, because Grogu's on the other side of that door. Grogu lives. If if it's if that's Anakin. Then whoever saves Grogu comes very quickly after that, or Grogu somehow defeats. I don't know. I just don't really see the possibility of Anakin knowing of Grogu and letting him live. I don't either. I think whoever's coming through that door is the one who saves him. Yeah. So, like, I really think it's either um, a lot of people are saying like Mace Windu or um, you know someone else, but I really think it's Quinlan Vos. Um, for the mention in Obi Wan, where he went mm. through the tunnels that Obi Wan went through, and he used them, and he had to, you know, sneak someone through. Um, I don't know. I really think it's going to be Quinlan Boss, and people are going to think it's Mace Windu at first because it's just uh, they'll just see, you know, they'll see someone just pop up. I don't this is an you, extremely you know, important part to the the whole <gasps> thing about yes, you know, yes, I, yes, 
And I really, th- so, um, Sifo Dias, because he was the one who went to Camino, and so, okay. He, he actually- logs in as Master Sifo Dias and wipes yeah. the memory yeah. of Camino from it. So, but is this, this is after that they after he's Camino, ordered the army. the army though uh-huh so, like sifo is already he's he's a part of it like he isn't like just a bi he's not just a complete alias that dooku's using right or is it like sifo is- exists yeah if we're taking jedi lost as law he's lost his mind by now sifo has yeah so no dooku would just be using his name to do shit uh okay to do shit on the low key. Uh, I love the way that this episode takes place like concurrently with the Phantom Menace and it like slowly yeah. unfolds yeah. as the Phantom Menace unfolds. I love that I, shit. That too. was something I did not expect. I mean, I knew we were getting prequel stuff and such, but I guess it never dawned on me that Dooku would have been, you know, Still Still technically with the Jedi at this point in time. You never really, I never really given thought to it. Well, there's also the fact that, uh, there's this, uh, there's this thing where I don't think he's technically a part of the Jedi anymore at this point. He just, he was welcome back and he was welcome back. Anytime he, anytime he wanted to visit the Jedi, he visited the Jedi. Um, like he could come back to the temple and hang out, uh, at least according to Master and Apprentice, mm. and uh, and mm. the new Ken- Obi Wan Kenobi novel from last year called Padawan. Uh, he would just come visit, and uh, ah, fully grown Qui Gon, love that. And Yaddle just chilling there. Um, yeah, man, I I haven't seen much of Yaddle, so. Very mm-hmm. sick to see Yaddle. I love how she just talks completely normally, not in riddles, just actually proper. Right, actually voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard, who uh, is the daughter oh! of Ron Howard, and uh, she directs multiple episodes of The Mandalorian. She's in the Jurassic World franchise. Yeah, uh, very very prominent woman, uh, prolific, if you will. I uh, love love her in my Star Wars. I love me some Bryce Dallas Howard, and she does uh she does a good job voicing Yaddle, especially giving us the whole reveal that Yoda just talks like that because. Or, you know, maybe Yaddle would have if she like became nine hundred. Um, you know, she's like five hundred or something, right? Like four hundred. Like, th- didn't we conclude? Yeah, like, yeah, she's about half the age. She's uh, she's almost half the age of Yoda. Like, yeah, uh, so... the, the thing for me is that I think she's, uh, I think Yoda talks like that because he lived those 400 years before her. Like, it's an older way of speaking. She would, okay. I don't think she just develops it. Like, I think it's just, okay, uh, fair, fair. <laughs> yeah. I guess true. You don't just change the way you talk because you're older. I don't know. If you live for hundreds of years, though, maybe you do. Maybe you just go, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna start talking different. Like, fuck, I've talked the same way for goddamn 700 years. I'm just gonna switch, talk this way I will now. And then he just, <laughs> fuck it, you know, like, fuck it, that's how it started, I don't know. Like, I love it, I love it. Uh, what? No, yeah, I Yaddle, Yaddle sense Maybe the Yoda's conflict. older. Maybe Yoda's older. Yoda is older. Than Yaddle, by about, like, by a significant Yoda's amount. Yoda's when he was learning he how to like speak. By 400 when years. He was learn- yeah, maybe when he was learning to speak, they all spoke like that, so he just didn't know how to not That's the thing, like that. is that, like, I always thought that Yoda and Yaddle were, like, around the same age. Like, that they could be, like, either Yaddle's a couple got that or beautiful, brother and sister. Beautiful, but, bright red mm-hmm. head of hair, you know? Yoda's got the white wisps. There, that's, Can you that's imagine Yoda that. with a full head of hair? He would have been absolutely stunting on these hoes. That man would have just... had the Mac game, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he would have been spitting. And now we've fast forwarded oh, in the score, uh, episode right? to after Qui Gon's death. Oh, cool. dude, this hit so hard because I wasn't quite sure where, and then like, yeah. I used to bring Qui Gon here as a boy. Mm. 
Hmm. Man, this like voice, or I don't know what to call it, like the him in the background. Mm. Like 300-esque Gladiator. I also don't think I knew that. Uh, did he just say Qui-Gon was born on Coruscant? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Didn't know that. A planet a planet of stone and uh, steel, steel and stone. Steel and stone, yeah. Yeah. Bricks? Are they in the Jedi Temple? Oh, no. What are they doing? What are they doing to Star Wars? What have they done? As though Yavin temples weren't built with fucking bricks. Like, oh man, I don't, yeah, that's, I don't, man, it is crazy though that Yaddle, like, yo, I, so it's kind of like every 400 years they come around. Ish. At least as far as we know, based off the three we've met, they're about four to 500 years apart. One of them is about it hard. True. Like, that's not a coincidence. Ooh, this is... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll follow him on out there. She playing a dangerous game. She's like, I sense something within this man. Yeah. Something wrong. God, Coruscant, as shitty an idea of a planet it is, just a full city planet. Was it like... You know, I talked about how I like the lush green. I understand the beauty of Coruscant from an architectural and engineering standpoint, but... uh I don't know. Just no, it's, I'm it's going just, into it's just disappointing for me now. I'm going into that, and this is the most unappetizing city to me. The most appetizing city to me is like Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, New York City, like in the like when it was all green and solar panels. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. That's the, that's my ideal city there, where it's like the perfect fuse of nature and city. Um, but oh, here he is. Yeah, look at that. He doesn't fuck with it. That's his boy, you know, that's his son. Dude, and I just... So crazy to see this, because you can see the exact same manipulation he's pulling with, with Dooku here, that he pulls on Anakin, and you can just see the, like... You can't fall anyone for caving to this man and it also just builds up the lore of Luke Skywalker even more in my opinion not to make this about him because we're a long ways about it but like dude he's like the only person who ever has been able to look him down the eye and say nah dude no. you're, you're on some other shit Fuck yep yeah man now that it's so powerful Sifo-Dyas Camino the clones betrayed everyone he knew he betrayed Sifo Diaz and him were homies from like a young age. They came up together Ooh. in the temple. Uh, and Did we see that in Clone Wars or hear about that in Clone Wars? Or is that not particularly? They touched on Sifo Diaz briefly because he's been missing for a while. Uh, well, I know he's in like that, that last season, right? Oh, did we lose Joe? Or did he turn? No, his he's still off? there. His he just turned his camera off. Okay, sorry. I think I have it set to where like it's like on only people with a camera. I can see. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. And I love that Yaddle offers him that chance of redemption. Yeah, no, she doesn't, you know, she's not ac- accusatory right off the rip. She's like, whatever you know. you've done, help me now. We can do this. Yeah, and the framing again, just... Uh. The dark, shrouded in shadow Palpatine bathed in light yaddle. I mean, you're literally seeing, yeah, and then the constant switching. It's literally the, you know, devil and the angel on your shoulder type thing. Mm. I mean, Dooku saying it behind your back, yaddle saying it directly while looking at you, you Mm. know, I mean, like all this stuff just. I'm afraid. Dooku always did feel like in terms of Sith Lords or anything, and I mean, naturally, I guess because he was once a Jedi, that probably should feel that way. He just always felt the most, like, I guess, humanized of any of the Sith Lords, and and one that was, I, I don't know, I guess just, he didn't have that sense of, like, 
you could just hate him as easily as you could another. Uh, no, yeah, he feel like because like that ploy he makes in Attack of the Clones to Obi Wan, you know that like, uh, right. join me, we can stop this, we can make sure this ends. I know who's controlling it, and Kenobi's like, nah, I don't believe you, you're fucking crazy, uh, and who can blame him? Should be Dooku turning around with the saber there. I love how fast Yaddle's breathing here. She's like clearly so shook up in this moment and she knows this could be a massive turning point right here, you know, depending on how the rest of this encounter goes. And I also love that this accounts for a kind of continuity error where Yaddle says like, I stepped down from my position on the council. You know, we don't see her in Attack of the Clones or Avenger of the Sith at all. So it's like, she was like, you have your points, you know, I see where you're coming from, but we need to work together to fix this. And, uh, ah, mm. yeah, dang, man. Oh man, this is a big, what if, like if you, Yaddle actually kills Dooku here. Yeah. Just what happens to Palpatine that. at that yeah. point? Maul's mm-hmm. dead. Dooku's dead. Who becomes the next apprentice? I remember seeing that being like, yo, what the fuck? I really? No, really. I'm like, like it's just like I'm that? Like, I'm like, wait, I was like, this show so is going to open like it back up, right? Tame for the most part. And then I was like, yo, we really just murky out in the most gruesome way I can possibly <laughs> imagine. Look at his eyes, yellow. Yep, yep, yep. Glad you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Oh, on oh, the score right now. And oh. as the light pours in, they go back to yep. brown. He even looks hopeful almost in that moment. Yeah, like he's admiring what she does. Why didn't you just fall back, you know? Just fall backwards. She's not going to give up on him, man. I know, but... Uh. Like, this single episode makes Yaddle one of the fucking realest. You know? Like, this is a real one. Well, and I think her intentions are purer than any Jedi who would be here in this moment, either. I mean, For she sure. is truly coming from a nonpartisan point of view. You know, Mace Windu I mean, comes through and he goes, you are under arrest. You know, yeah. like, uh, and, you know, it. Ha- I fuck with Mace Windu. I don't think he's as fucking terrible as a lot of people like to make him out to be. But, uh, you know, he would handle this situation differently. And uh, I think there's... Uh... It just shows, it just goes to show how far gone Dooku is, I think, at this point, is that... Yeah. Arguably, Yaddle would have been the only one to save him, and I think that's after the passing of Qui Gon. You would think that would deter him more away from Palpatine, arguably who set that all in motion. However, it is probably the nail in the coffin that drove him towards him entirely. God, it sucks that that disconnection happened so close to the end of the episode, too. Man, could have been right in the middle. Could have been right in the middle. Everything would have been just fine. I, think I guess, fine. but uh, maybe it might work out to where you could just cut that out and then just it'll just mash yeah, up. Or yeah, maybe the, I'll, I'll I'll do something about it. I'll do something about it. Yeah, we'll I'll it. play with it. Oh, oh, yeah, it. baby, we're about to get into the fucking mean yeah, potatoes this here. Is, this episode this right here hits something different. This is that shit right there. Season one, episode five. Practice makes perfect. Get it queued up to zero, zero, zero. And when you are ready, I'll give us a count in. Are you all ready? Oh, I'm yep. ready. All right, then, three, two, one, punch it. Dude, 12 minutes, but God, what happens in they 12 minutes? They pack this in, bro. Insane. Like, I want to I wanna watch that last arc from the Clone Wars, like, yes. pause it. And then bump this shit yeah. right in. Yeah. Oof, 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 man. It's beautiful, man. This is a this is a hard hitting one. Yeah, and I can't believe we're already done with all the Dooku stuff. This is all yeah. Ahsoka from here on out. There uh, we go. And I like that it's like it's like almost chronological. You know, like Ahsoka is mm-hmm. not old enough for all that stuff that took place earlier to have been born before it. But you know, whatever. <laughs> I love that Anakin is 
running around, running late right now like this. And yet here he goes in like five minutes getting ready to make fun of Ahsoka for the same thing. Yeah, right. Gosh, these classic looks. Uh, <laughs> Minor Obi-Wan continuity so- error. Uh, Obi-Wan grew the mullet back out just for this. Yes. You know, this He's takes a, place after that. the Clone Wars movie where he has the short hair. He can do that. Mm-hmm. He's like, we're going to go ahead and go back to the Attack of the Clones look just for a little bit. <laughs> I love me some mullet Obi-Wan. Oh. Terra Sanube. Ewan, Ewan McGregor serves that shit up in any way, any way, shape, or form. Mm. I like me some Terra Sanube, too. Most recently appeared, before this, in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, dead as fuck inside one Ooh. of those gelatinous container oh, things. Oh, man. Yep. Poor guy. Yeah, that was a rough one. That was a rough one. Gosh, and the way that those moves mirror exactly what she does when she's facing the clones later on. Wait, who's that little kid? Was that uh, Caleb Doom? That's Kanan that's, Jarrus. That's what I was gonna say. That looked an awful lot like Kanan. Um, yeah, because he's sitting with Depa Bilaba, uh, his, his master. What a cool room that! I just was. love Osoka's fights. Something right that there. I never get tired of watching, and the animation speaks so well for it. I know that we haven't gotten the live series TV show yet, but we've seen her in a couple of things a little bit. There is just no possible way that that the action and the live action can possibly compare to what Ahsoka's movement and you know action is like in the animated. And I just no love that the, the stuff that you get in the animated stuff with her is just beautiful. It's always like poetry to watch just unfold in front of of you. Yeah, no chance, no chance. Uh, but damn, man, yeah, those are a couple of a uh, couple of Jedi Anakin cuts down later on. That were just yeah, sitting right there. Most of these people, um, actually. Well, I guess a lot of them die in the, uh, in, uh, here it is. Here it is. What's that called? God, that shot of them too, just bathed in light. Like, I just love it. And then splitting off. And I love that Obi Wan and Yoda are just watching. <laughs> they're, they're like, that was a weird conversation, right? Fuck like Anakin's such a little prima donna. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Gosh, the fact that Anakin teaches her the very the very moves to prevent death in the situation oh, that he was oh, a centerpiece of. I know, I know, dude. Immaculate, immaculate. <laughs> I love that we do get that. I mean, that's one thing I loved about Clone Wars. They're just jokes and one-liners to each other are just always that. so good. Oh, they're so good. I love them, dude. Ah, Captain Rex. It's good to see the man. Uh, what a guy. I love him. What a guy. Commando. Dude, I had no idea what was coming at the end of this shit, and it hit me so oh, hard, dude. It hits you like a fucking ton of bricks, man. That's, That's the thing. You know, like, I told you I watched this for the first time the day it came out, and I haven't watched it since, and it sticks so firmly in your brain. Like, I remember so much mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it was so I well this done. episode a lot more. Well, and I'm telling you, it, when it's only six episodes in there, this is easier to because like I said it's one or two profound moments of the episode that just really like click and make it all come together dude I was literally laughing so hard though in this scene for this montage because (laughs) dude she just keeps eating these fucking shots man she like how much can one person take in a row dude Dude, I just was laughing. It's right here. How long was I out? An hour. Again, Don't worry. gets up, so immediately gets shot instead of by one stun. Got shot by three all at once. You'll get used to it. <laughs> ah, Jesse. Ah, Jesse. It's one of the one of the clones they unfortunately it's stumbling have to strike so down. hard. Oh. Yeah. Five. Five. 
Oh, oh. Dude. <laughs> oh. Oh, Tell me that's bro. not horrible. Like, I would oh, get it towards out. the end if you shot her three times, but she got shot once and was out for her. And then you expect me to believe she's going to get up and go again three times after three shots. <laughs> And it keeps lasting even shorter and shorter. No, and I know, dude. It. I'm also just like, oh, surely, like, she'll get the hang of it here shortly. No, no, I'm getting murked. Just getting murked. Hennigan's kind of a fucking hard ass, man, but hey, it pays yeah. off. Little does she know this is like the most important training of her fucking life. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh. I love me some Ahsoka, man. Sometimes I forget just how much I love that character. And then, you know, so I just rewatch out... the stuff with her. Wait a minute. If she's out for an hour every time she gets knocked down? Or is this supposed to be like waking up, up faster. faster and faster? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I just still couldn't believe she got shot once out for an hour. Second time she ever gets shot three times in a row. She's just going to chill. This is about life and death. Yep, bang, there it is. Literally the name of the first episode, Life mm. and Death, and the same lessons her mother taught. The best way I, I would can protect ar- you is teach you how to protect yourself. I God, really I do love, love that he's connecting and teaching directly in line with the rituals and like the, the lore of the Tagruti people. Mm. Because And he may not be doing that intentionally. However, you got to think about how you know that impacts Ahsoka. I mean, sure. I just love that two of the most profound teachers in her life, we've literally gotten two tidbits directly connecting them as kind of the impacts on the, her life and more um, her in, the, in this show, in this show. So cool. God, the score once again. Mm. And it, it, it harkens back to the life and death episode that they were playing, the kind of music they were playing. Those drums kind yeah. of, yeah. Oh man, no, don't do I. Yeah, that's the spirit. Yep. Yeah, now she's doing it on her own. And now she's got dos. Dos sabers. Hmm. God, she's cold with it. Anakin's hair a little longer. Evolving, growing. Her outfit's hey. different. Hmm? Hello. Spin move? Move she oh. does being exactly what she does to prevent it. Ah. Oh. Oh. Uh. And fuck. As soon as I saw. I mean, as soon as it changed, I was like, no. Mother no, don't take fucker. me back here. Don't take me back. You trained for this. I hope all the training paid off. God damn. As as soon as I saw it, I was immediately like, that makes me sad. But I also was like, God, I need to go watch those last, like, two episodes. Yeah, man. Those shit, that's... But the problem is, is it just makes you want to go watch that whole last season. Like, I don't feel like I want to just watch the last Well, and that's the thing, though, is that ahead of Ahsoka, I think I might want to go ahead and just give, like, a a giant rewatch to that show. Uh, It is pretty good, man. It's so good. That and the Rebels episodes that are key to her. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you guys are ready, we can count in for this last uh, this last episode. You ready? No, let's do I'm it. I'm at zero, All right. zero. In three, two, one, punch it. And we are off once again. I never get tired of watching this. This, this no, yeah, you know, I think uh, I like the introduction. I do wish they'd change the music. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not a huge wish, fan of the music. I wish the droids and the characters 
red and blue would change every episode. It'd be like, I don't know, you get like R2 and then C3. I don't know. Oh, I, I was, yeah. oh, and what a way to start. I'm Hello. sorry. I haven't seen this one. Oh. Yeah, we're at Padme's yeah. funeral to kick it off yeah. here. I did and read the plot summary. Present. Still looking I did read the plot too. summary before, so I kind of know what happened. But like that's the thing I didn't I, really realize. Bale and Mon Mothma knew, there. Like people knew that she died pregnant, or people believe that she died pregnant, not giving mm. birth. You know. Yeah. Um. But man, gosh, and Ahsoka, the book Ahsoka goes into Bale and her relationship a lot more. Um. Brick. I, I just love to mention it every time that because this is like one of the most prequel locations there is. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> and it's God, an actual real Bail place Okana. on Earth. Yeah, the way oh, he holds man. it down for the Jedi. This is already one of the things that retcons the book heavily. Oh, really? Uh, because Bail doesn't learn that Ahsoka's alive after Order sixty six until like a year later in the book. Uh, oh wow and it's because she's doing a string of nice deeds for people out in the galaxy she he has no idea she's a jedi he has people go visit her and via video he sees like oh shit that's ahsoka tano let's go ahead and get her in here and they work some shit out that's how she gets her way into the rebellion and that like as fulcrum and stuff okay okay Uh, oh because i guess I guess, like, what happens really here? Yeah, they don't really, like... Oh, I guess he would just know that she's alive, though. That would be... Yeah, that's kind of quite the change. Yeah. Because even if they don't see each other until about a year, you know, yeah. and then stuff were to happen. Still quite the change. Oh, well, and there are far worse changes. Mm. Uh And I don't know, who knows, maybe she she does, like, I guess, I don't know, maybe, she, no, because he doesn't, they all just wouldn't assume Ahsoka would be dead within a year of, like, not Probably hearing. not, probably not. No, it's, uh, it's different, it's, it is a change, and that's, like, that's okay, I'm okay with stories existing in different mediums, it's just, uh, mm. the kind of things it costs us later on kind of mm. sucks. Uh, when she gets to her plan- the planet she hides away on uh in the book it's called Riata I'm not sure if I'm not sure if it gets a name in this uh, but she grows to really the people on that like one of the people on that planet has like a major crush on her they're uh like they're they almost have a romantic type of relationship mm. but uh we don't get any of that here um Gosh, just beautiful imagery. Once again, he's still with Rex. She's still with Rex. Oh, what a sick ship. Now, do you think that is... That's... No, that has to be after they crashed. Post-Order 66. Dang. Man. Resolve. Resolve. Get a fucking Inquisitor in this one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, yeah. I read that. I okay. did read that. Oh, look how real that looks. Holy fuck. Photo looks real. like Kansas. Kansas. Space Kansas. <laughs> Kansas with droids. Yeah, the imagery definitely does harken back quite a bit to Riata. So, I like to go with the head canon that she experienced two different things that are awfully similar. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think I read that like it was retconned from the books and stuff because, like, they were the only things on this planet. I think in the book or something is what I read. And in this, I think they have to, like, deliver it to another area to sell it. Mm. Yeah, no, oh, there's there's a, there's a lot that changes here. Uh, for example, the family she helps is white. Um, not, not in the books. Uh, 
Uh oh. Use the force, young one. Oops. She was like, yeah, oh, I mean, uh, like, you could have stopped holding your hand up a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> That has to be, like, the first time that she has used, used it in quite a somewhere. while, though. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Kind of took her by surprise, even, probably. Right. Yeah, man, shit. Those bubbles look funny as hell. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why they. Her name, her code name is Ashla in the book. She does go by Ashla, as opposed to Ahsoka. Hmm. I am. So they are uh, very. They're, they're aware of it. Yeah, very aware. Dave Filoni helped with the book. Like it's hmm. not. Yeah, no, that's what I I was reading on the whatever. I'm just I'm continually or, impressed with the decisions to make the characters more white. Um. <laughs> as as per the Bad Batch, being based off Tamara Morrison, um, and then being basically white dudes, and Omega being a white dude or white girl. Didn't um, think about that. And in the book, the family she helps is is expre- like mentioned in the book as having dark skin, and like it's just it's, I feel it's like continu- they try to cop the cop the aliens and stuff as like the diversity. Which yeah, is and of, it's like no, kind of no. Mess. No, let's let's do something a little better here. Um, mm. So when it came when it comes to the adaptation sorts of things, I'm okay with changes. It's just changes like that that are incredibly pointless. Like you don't need to change things like that, you know. Mm. I think Seems that's like- I think that's dumb and extremely unneeded and sends a pretty pretty negative message. Uh, especially with such a shitty track record in that regard. But, yeah. Uh, wonder, wonder. They'd probably have an excuse at the ready for like, oh, well, we have all of these like different characters that we've already made, and they're like the base layer. So if we right. did that, it'd cost X millions of dollars. Okay, bro. Right. Right. Okay, bro. Yeah. What's up with all your base characters being white? Yeah. <laughs> I do love I do love me some Twi'leks though. I like that you know some Rodian. That, that's there. right, Twi'leks. I kept thinking Trandoshan, but Trandoshan is like a Bosk or something. Bosk, right? yeah. And yeah. Sid in the Bad Batch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bitch, shut up. Fuck you. Smart rat. Ass. You fucking rat. Mm. He's a bitch. Save what your that? sister's life you and fucking... not you shit. goddamn rat. It's the worst rat I've night. ever heard. Have a fun night in Blackhead Carmine. I have a feeling it's gonna be your last. <laughs> Gosh, the lighting is just immaculate. They do so good with the with the lighting. And uh never good to see a village Ew. burning. Yeah, man, not what not an like. ideal state of affairs. Let's see. Oh man, poor droid. I hate seeing a droid go down. That should make me sad. That was some. That was some cool imagery. Mm. Eesh. He's mean looking as. That fuck. is scary. Yeah, that is scary. Damn. Yeah, he expressly ratted. Yeah, and then look at the consequences of what you did, you dumb fuck. You goddamn rat. I want to know why this motherfucker, like, dissipates when he dies. Just like... Phew. He died. Boiler. He did die. <laughs> I read the plot summary. 
Ahsoka like, doesn't die here? Are you kidding me? Believe wow. it or not. And... I was going to say deserved, but, well. <laughs> but that's the thing. She protects at all costs. And that's why I respect her. <laughs> the Inquisitor lightsabers really are fucking dope, huh? I love this model, too. Um, like, isn't... the way... The Moon Knight slash Inquisitor. Right. Or I guess it's Khonshu. Khonshu slash Khonshu type beat. God. Beautiful. The standoff. The western ass theme. Bubbling up. It's interesting that he knows who she is. Like specifically. Right. Right. Because Anakin or Vader doesn't let anyone know. And oh my god how clean. Dang. Head off. See you later, Stinky. Beat her. Beat him without a lightsaber. Took your own weapon. Yeah. Let him know. And yeah, I, for real. Yeah. Look what you did. This is your fault, you fucking rat. I'd tell him that shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I know. Yeah, and now you you got to go somewhere else, bro. Try to make it all figure it out. Nice, nice. Way to go, guy. Fucking dick, dude. Like, why? Yeah, what you you really thought you did something, huh? Like, I'll report him to the Empire. That makes sense. They're nice. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Fortune awaits. See, like, the book culminates in, like, Bale sending the Rebellion fleet here and, like, what he's con- congregated as the Rebellion fleet facing off with the Empire, Ahsoka escaping with, with the people of Raeda. Like, a lot more people make it out. The entire village lives, uh, except for a few who obviously go down. Uh, they said, fuck that, it's a slaughter. Yeah, I'm like, that's just, uh, all in all, they made a worse story, which I think is bold. Uh, I guess they did need to condense it way down, though. But they still, did. But that's I the thing. Know. I tell that story then. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Tell a different story uh, if you need unless, to condense. It so unless much. this backstory is crucial for the Ahsoka show that's coming, I don't know. You know, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they'd have crucial backstory to Ahsoka in Tales of the Jedi, though. I feel like that's just done in Ahsoka. Um, right. She go right. Home. So, but yeah, that was a nice goes. closing theme there. That was hard. That dun, 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 dun. that shit's hard. But yeah, that concludes Tales of the Jedi. Thank you everybody for joining us on a on a good old fashioned uh, live commentary. I hope you uh, stuck around. It was very nice watching it with you guys. Um, I'm happy we did it, and happy Star Wars Pod Day, everybody. Um, thinking, uh, you know, some more Star Wars animation live commentaries. Maybe we. Maybe we take a crack at the 2D micro series at some point. Ooh, uh, that could I haven't be a fun seen one. that. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. That to could watch. be fun. I think that'd be a fun one. Maybe do that for Star Wars Day, like uh, May the fourth or May twenty fifth, uh, yeah, something. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, hell yeah, guys! With that, we'll conclude this episode of Rebellions Bloom. Tells the Jedi was fucking awesome, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And thank you very much, KBZ Kyler Barnett. Absolutely. Absolutely. And with that, tomorrow brings us another episode of Rebellion's Bloom, as we are going to be covering the double episode of 7 and 8 of The Bad Batch. We got to the clone conspiracy and some other shit. It's going to be a fun one. I'm excited for a double, another double episode Let's of The go. Bad Batch. I uh, can't wait for that. If you would, head to patreon.com slash pennybloompod where I'm putting out weekly comic book pull lists. Like I said, I'm doing a bunch of rereading in Star Wars books, so I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna start doing a little bit of reviews on those. I've done a lot of Star Wars book reviews in the past. Uh they're they're all there. Once you once you buy 
that uh, that three dollar a month subscription, you get access to everything we've ever done. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Helps me out hugely. If you would head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. Remember to leave a five star rate and review wherever you are listening. And remember, peace, love, and bloom, and happy Star Wars Podcast Day. <laughs>